hum, hum. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Our Stories. My name is Nate Chacon III. If this is your first time, welcome. If it's not, the retention program is working. What I do on this podcast normally is I'm a glorified narrator to some stories that you have heard and some that you haven't. It's like Libro.fm, sorta. But today um, we are on Our Stories episode two. Uh, normally, um, again, I would read, but here I'm a student of life learning about other people to share their stories, insight, and opinion, which in turn become our stories. Today we have Keith McDonald. Um, I co-host the Friday Night Fallout show with him every Friday on KRCL, 90.9 FM. And beyond uh, being the co-host or being the host of that show, Keith is also a veteran um, in the United States Air Force and uh, a strong community organizer here in Salt Lake City. He has uh, deep roots um, in hip hop and how the culture has moved him. Very excited to have spoke with him and to get a better idea of who he is and how you know his upbringing has brought him to where he is today. Very interesting story, very interesting cat, my friend, and very happy to have him uh, on the second episode of Our Stories. Without further ado, let's make sure that we shout out our sponsors. Um, this episode of the podcast is sponsored by Extraterrestrial Media. Visit extratmedia.com if you need to film a music video, record an audio single, or need to uh, get some work on a podcast that you're thinking about doing, um, or get a drone shot of like your business or home, uh, visit extratmedia.com. He has a range of services to help any of your media needs. And by he, I mean George uh, McDonald, or also goes by George Life. Um, we're also partnered with Libro.fm. When you make the switch, enter Story Bingo at checkout for your new membership to receive two audiobook credits instead of one. Libro.fm makes it possible for you to buy audiobooks through your local bookstore, giving you the power to keep money within your local economy, create local jobs, and make a difference in your community. Short Story Bingo is, of course, partnered with the King's English Bookshop here in Salt Lake City, which is located on 1511 South, 1500 East in Salt Lake City, Utah. Visit kingsenglish.com. We're also partnered with Jaws or Size. Um, Brandon Harris and his crew, they've built an amazing uh, fitness product for your face that uh, works over 40 muscles. Um, they just released a new line that has mint flavoring. The Total Transformation Pack uh, certainly will ensure that you see the results that you're looking for. An amazing product. He was on episode one. Go back to that to get a better idea of what they're doing over there at Jaws or Size. But every single time that you use the code STORYBINGO, you get 60% off. Um, I've got emails from folks that have utilized this and are very happy with what uh, Jaws or Size is doing with them. Um, or doing for them, rather. But yeah, very excited for that partnership and that opportunity to be able to um, bring that to our listeners so again story bingo at checkout to receive 60 percent off of your order um with that in tow sit back enjoy this is uh you know our story short story bingo episode two sat down with keith mcdonald again my name is nate chacon the third this is freddie fucking krueger and yeah we're gonna do it. oh one last thing i want to mention for you audio listeners please check out the youtube we are online and there are videos, so um, just simply search Short Story Bingo. Um, also, the link is in the description here. Um, please subscribe. Every Saturday, we're bringing these to you, uh, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Short Story Bingo, episode two, Our Stories. My name is Nate Chacon III, and we have Keith McDonald. Hope you enjoy. Short story bingo. Short story bingo. Short story bingo. Short story bingo. Sometimes they're funny and sometimes they're sad. Most of the time they're funny because I hate to be sad. Short story bingo. Short story bingo. Short story bingo. Short story bingo. But don't take my word for it. Spare fingers. Yes. Hello and welcome back to Short Story Bingo, another episode of Our Stories. If this is your first time, welcome. If it's not, the retention program is working. Normally, I'm your friendly, sometimes funny, a glorified narrator, but here I am more so a student of life, learning about 
other people to share their stories, insight, and opinions, which in turn become our stories. Today, um, we have Keith McDonald. He's a father first, journalist, podcaster, community organizer, veteran of the Air Force, and host of the longest running hip hop show in Utah, the Friday Night Fallout Show on KRCL Radio, 90.9 FM. Uh, Keith has been instrumental in organizing events for the local hip hop scene and continues to push positivity and growth through his personal ventures. Keith, how are you, sir? Welcome to an episode of Our Stories. I am very well. Um, I've been looking forward to this moment for a long time, man. I appreciate <laughs> you having me on, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's a long time coming um, for folks that um, are already loyal listeners to the Friday Night Fallout show. You guys would know that we both are the hosts on that. We haven't done a podcast, though, in uh, about three and a half years almost, right? Yeah. Together? Man, it's, been, it's It's been almost three and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. It's been almost three and a half years. So the first thing I really want to dive into Keith, uh, because there's questions I have that I haven't even asked you just as your friend. Um, I know you came here via Hill air force base. Talk about that for me. Um, well, I was at Ohio state university, uh, messing up royally. And I, I, I went to, uh, military high school at Culver Military Academy in Culver, Indiana. And my thought was, since my mom wasn't going to pay for C's, I was going to go to ROTC and I was going to pay for my own education. Yeah. So I could continue living the lifestyle I wanted to live and be a jerk and all of that type of stuff and not focus on school. So um, it just so happened that at one point I just decided to drop out and join the Air Force. And um it was, it was between Layton, Utah, and Aviano, Italy, and I was, oh. I was praying, praying to go to Aviano, Italy, man. It's a, it's an interesting story. So, uh, one of my friends, man, a big guy, man, in, in, uh, in tech school, um, he, he was crying when we got our orders, and I looked at him, and, and when I looked at my, my orders, it said Hill. You know, it said Utah, and I never, you know, what I, my my knowledge of Utah was the NBA Finals with Michael Jordan, you know, against Carl Malone and John Stockton. So, sure. um, I was I was pretty miffed, but I wasn't crying, you know. And his his order said Aviano, Italy, and I'm like, bruh, look, you're from Cali. This is what we do: you get to change orders once, you know, right here in tech school. Like they give you a couple of days, you can switch orders with somebody. Right. Let's meet up at the flight office or whatever. Let's change orders. You could drive from Utah to California to see your fiance. He was mad because, you know, he was engaged. So we met up at the flight office the next day. And he told me, man, skip that girl, man. I'm going to Italy, man. And that's how hey, I got to <laughs> let's go. Wow. And, that, and, that, and that's how I got to, to Utah, man. I was, I have, I have in my head, I had, you know, me in an authentic Italian restaurant, playing paying the mandolin player to, you know, uh, you know, strum out the the Godfather three theme, like, you know, Mob Deep for me as I ate authentic Italian cuisine, man. It was all in my head, man. But you know, I'm here. Yeah. So you so the cart before the horse. So you were counting the eggs before they they were hatched. You know. I mean, the the number one thing I got, I, I went into the military for was experience. You know, sure. I, I felt like um, I had the college experience. I felt like, you know, I had the uh, I had the experience of you know living in a big city or living in a metropolitan area. Uh, you know, being from Chicago, and I wanted to travel the world, and I didn't have the money to travel the world, and that's what really attracted me to it. So, yeah. Um, it was definitely a culture shock getting here to Utah, man. I, I had never seen mountains before. Like I've, I've been to Hawaii, you know, but I had never seen a, a mountain range before like this, you know, mm. um, when they took us, you know, we're from the plane. I'm from the plains, dog. Like I'm not used to all of this elevation and stuff. Even like when we, you go up 800 South, you know, to the U I'm, I'm not used to that type of thing, you know? Right. So when they took us to Wisconsin in grammar school, to go skiing, I thought those were mountains. And they're not. 
No, those are hills, bro. Those are big hills. <laughs> no, those not are not mountains. Sorry. When we got to the mountain range and we saw the valley, the two things I thought were, man, this is small. Like it's the size of the whole valley is like the size of downtown. It looked to me. And then the mountain range is just like awe inspiring, man. It it really makes you think about your place in the world, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm 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 very small compared to what it took to make these mountains, you know, to to the the, the time it took to make these mountains, to the to the uh, you know the importance of all of these things in our in our ecosystem, man. It just it, it it's a very beautiful place to live, and it's a very stark contrast to where I, I grew up at. So I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I like that you brought that up because I when I was uh, living in uh, Little Rock, when I was in the Air Force, uh, when I would come home, I was um, hit with the same thing. Like when I would be on I-15 or excuse me on uh, 201, which turns into 215, which, you know, when you're um, going past like the ninth South exit or what have you. And like there's the whole range like there. And I was like, damn, I I forget like I, I would forget how beautiful it is but also how um impressive like like yeah. something that you don't see you know like you're just like whoa that is like a whole ass that took like a lot of time to like come to and you know what we forget about because we're we're utahns man you we sensitized? forget about this the smell of the salt right. lake when I first got here, I was like, for weeks, I was like, bro, what is this? Because I got here in the dead <laughs> of summer. And I'm like, bro, oh. what is this? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like that everywhere. Like, you go to the south, to Mississippi, the red dirt roads, and you go to the ocean in Cali, and that that smell. Like, everywhere you go has a distinct smell, but Salt Lake definitely has a, a distinct smell, man. Like, like a standout smell. Yeah. If, I like that you bring that up too. Like, uh, you know, North Salt Lake, how folks will um, connotate the sulfur smell with the um, uh, uh, plants out there, like the the like the sulfur plants. Or whatever. they're not sulfur plants. First off, they're not. They're just refineries. But um, it's because there are sulfur springs in North Salt Lake, and that's why that it smells like it does out there. I didn't know that. I thought it was the. Uh, I thought I thought it was the lake. Yeah, the common mis lake. common misconception. I get that, but like, I mean, the the lake does smell wild. Like when you get close to it, and being out in Layton and like in Clearfield, all that area, you definitely smell the lake a lot more than you do out here in the valley for sure. But um, in North Salt Lake, like, there's just sulfur springs everywhere. There's it was that all. drive, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, you touched on that you have, you know, big city experience, uh, being from Chicago. I, I've known so many different news stories from Chicago being, um, broadcasting next to you for the last four years, five years. Um, but I want to get a little bit more granular on the, um, experience in high school and what, uh, your experiences were when it came to sports and how, uh, that was um, like a coming of age potentially for you um, in a big city environment as compared to what you said, like the Valley was just like downtown Chicago type of thing to you. Um, what, 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 walk us through that. Uh, so in high school, I went to a school um, in a pretty notorious uh, <laughs> sectional, I guess, or the, the red South or the sick of South or whatever it is in the South suburbs. Um, we got, Donovan McNabb and Antoine Walker and Craig Hodges and you know a lot of a lot of like prime time ball players that came out of there uh, football tie streets uh, uh, Greg Lewis the wide receiver coach for the uh, Chiefs right now uh, uh -huh. you know went to my high school when I was there uh, um, but I only went I only went to school there I played freshman basketball um, there and you know we are at that time our varsity was like they they were on it. We had a whip, you know. Um, we they they were playing uh, 
the, you know, the top teams in the city, you know, the Ronnie Fields and the KGs and all of that, you know, we were playing like the, 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 the top guns. And then we had, you know, like hood legends like Sean Mason and to Daryl Faison and, you know, uh, my big homie, John L. Sloan and, 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 and just tons of tons of people that, you know, that ring bells in the, in the city. But, I actually played varsity ball in Indiana. You know, my mom sent me to boarding school. So Indiana is a totally different culture uh, basketball wise. So hmm. um, coming from Chicago and going to a boarding school before the game, they would have to announce where everybody was from on our team, you know, because everybody from their team is from the same school, every uh, from the same area. Everybody from our team is different. We had a guy from Mexico City. We had a guy from neighboring you know, from a neighboring, you know, neighborhood uh, city in Indiana. Uh, and we had a guy from, uh, you know, from Texas, you know. So all over. And, so all over. And then at yeah. the end, they're like, and from Chicago, Keith McDonald. And they would boo the heck out of me, man. They would boo me so bad. It would be, <laughs> it, it, it's ridiculous. I, I heard we don't want that Chicago shit over here so many times. No, you did not. Ball. Oh, yeah, man. They, they did not like it. Um, one time at a rival school, they announced me in front of everybody. I'm talking about it's a big game. Like, people are in the stands. And um, they announced me as Ronald McDonald in front of the whole school, man. And if That's I could have shot time. lasers out of my eyes at that dude, I would. But I don't really remember the game, but I do remember I had one of my best games that game. Word up. He's like, I don't remember it entirely, but I know that. But I remember I, I killed I killed that game. Man. I remember I, I, me- I remember those lasers transplant trans transcribed to points and shit. That's what buckets. I do remember. Bu- buckets. buckets. I'm a walking it, it's, bucket. It's, a, it's it's a different culture. So, um, <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's Chicago, Indiana, man. right? Because like yeah. it, it, the birthplace, Naismith, you know, the whole thing, peach baskets. Well, well, not- well, not that it's, 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 it's the, the demographic. So in Chicago, maybe one or two people on your block will have a hoop <clears throat> and it was, it was up to their parents. Some people, parents will let you play on their hoop. So most of us was on one or two hoops as a shorty. And we were, uh, it was a group of us playing 21 on one hoop. You go to Indiana and in these neighborhoods, it's a hoop at everybody's house on the block. So everybody can work on individual skills like shooting. You know what I'm saying? I had to get the ball and make sure I made a shot at 21 and made my free throws, you know? Wow. So that's what I grew up playing, Yeah. you know? And the funny thing is when I went to uh, college, eventually I went to college at Ohio State for my freshman year, um, they called the game of 21 Chicago. Right. So I don't know if you know what 21 is. It's yeah, I'm very Everybody familiar. gangs up on yeah. the rim, you know. Uh, I hoop, dog. I hoop. I hoop. But we, we call it 21 or varsity. Oh, and okay. Some people don't, 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 don't call it that. When I went to Columbus, they called it Chicago. Okay. Okay. That's weird. That's, but I mean, not weird. That's different. Yeah. Okay. It's, I mean. it's, it is, it, it is weird because wherever I go, the city of Chicago has a, a stigma attached to it. And certain people attach it to me closely and certain people just use it as, as I guess, a, a background story or whatever. But yeah. I've had the nickname Chicago in many places I've been to. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, well, uh, that, go ahead. People don't really dive into the culture as deep as they do the, the subcultures, you know, right. the, 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 the popular trends and stuff like that. You know, they don't know that, you know, Dusabo, a, a, a French black man, you know, helped design the city and built the city. You know, they don't know about uh, the world's fair that the world's fair. The that honestly was the, a big thing in shaping the nation's like view of how um, new businesses were going to come together. Like the world's fair was incredible and a big, oh, big piece. Yeah. Yeah. Hub City, so it takes everybody less time to get to us. It takes New York yep. people less time to get to us. It takes LA people less time to get to us and people from the South and so forth. So it's like a, a hub city. And then, you know, before the invention of air travel, we had the Mississippi River that, you know, allowed us to uh, take commerce from, you know, uh, North to South. But funny story about that, man. So if you ever, if you ever, uh, and an interesting uh, connection between Chicago, America, and Mexico is that uh, the Mississippi River used to run from south to north. 
And if you go to Chicago right now and you go to Lake Michigan, there are these huge locks or steps in Lake Michigan. And, and you'll see them, they'll go like, you know, like this, and it makes the water flow this way. So that, therefore we can send uh, boats down the Mississippi River and out through the Gulf of Mexico onto their way. Damn, so we, I did not know that. Yeah. Is that man-made? Yeah, man-made locks, man. They're big, huge, giant steps. That's wild. That's what you learn something new every day, they say. <laughs> I mean, you taught me something about Utah. I gotta teach you something about this about the shot, man. What what good am I if I'm out here just, you know, just yeah. here? You know, no, not, I totally not, get not helping it. out. You know what I mean? Nah, I mean, you feel me? Um so I, the reason why I brought up uh, your experience with sports in, in Chicago is I wanted to get a, a live look or get a look at what Michael Jordan's run was and what that was for Chicago residents. And what, yeah, like, I was just Bro, like, expand that. You. Yeah. Let so that's you. my, so yeah. In grammar school and high school, right? So Jordans were so big that people used to cut school and go get them, right? And right. I remember vividly my freshman or like sophomore year in high school before I, I like took off to go to boarding school, man, a certain edition of the is being made and all of the GDs going out and getting them. Cause you know, the bulls colors are all are red and black. Right. So they right. came out with a, a red and, and blue colorway and like, all the GDs went out and bought them and the school wouldn't let them back in the school. They, they considered it mob action and the school wouldn't let them back in the school. Like, so my mom is from, my mom doesn't come from, uh, you know, fancy upbringing, man. My mom's is from uh, 43rd estate. If people from Chicago, they know what that used to be and everything back in the day. So um, we wasn't getting a hundred dollar gym shoes. And plus I'm a skinny kid. Like they would have took them off of me, man. Like it took t- till I got to be 15 or 16 till, till I, my mom would really let me have a gold chain and like a starter's jacket. But I didn't get my first pair of Jordans till I was in the air force, bro. Wow. Okay. Like for real, like, but I Jordan, as far as like bulls fan, I went to tons of bulls games, man. Like yeah. tons of bulls games. My first bulls game as a shorty, My mom got me, my two older cousins, and herself tickets through our little village. You know, like, like, you know, you you, you got the little township or whatever. Through our township, there was a little program. They would take you on a van in a van to the Bulls game, and you and your family could go to the Bulls game. And we got to see the Bulls versus Dominique Wilkins Hawks. And let me tell you, it was one of Jordan's worst games ever. I think he had like 18, 19 points. He had one dunk and he fell after the dunk. And, and he I fell. Think they lost. I think they, it wasn't a smooth, like Jordan is known for being like a, a Black Panther smooth, you know? Right. It was not a smooth dunk. And my two cousins are football fans, devout Bears fans. They don't play basketball. I love basketball and baseball. I'm not too into playing football. So sure. I was there to, to, for the experience. And they were, they were, they were heckling. They were, they were not making it fun for me. My first Bulls game was not fun. Like I was mad. I was like, why are they acting like this? You know, it was, it was not fun for me dog, at all, but future Bulls and they weren't that good. Yeah. Like future Bulls games, bro. I mean, I went to celebrations in Grant Park uh, right. for the first, when they, when they beat the Lakers, my aunt took 91. us to Grant Park in 91. Uh, uh, we went to Grand Park uh, in the, the following year when they beat the Trailblazers. And when I tell you pandemonium, bro. Okay, that's what I'm. Was, that's it, where I'm getting it was to. Pandemonium. So we're like, we're standing there. They're, they're like in this ticker tape parade and we're standing next to this big, like orange, like this big uh, fence, but it's like the orange, like, uh, like plastic type material, right? Sure. And we're standing right next to this guy. And he just boom, boom, kicks it down. And we like flood the streets. And like, we got to shake John Paxson's hand and like uh, Horace Grant and all of that. And you know, my, uh, and uh, who was the, who, who else, man? I forget, but okay. you know, it, it was a, it was a, it was a good experience. Of course, Michael Jordan was not amongst the people. He was like basketball Jesus. So like right. they would have, they would have, they would have, he would have never got out of there, but the Pope, they had, yeah, they, he, 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 he would have had to have his own mobile and shit. Bananas. But I, my, my mom worked for the County, worked for Cook County in Chicago, in uh, 
in Markham uh, for the longest time. And, you know, she would go from Markham all the way up to Maywood on the West side to do things. And, um, you know, she was pretty, she had, she, she had a lot of friends that, that, that loved her. And, and some of her friends would hook me up. They would hook me up with tickets, you know, when I was back in town from, from high school, you know, and um, I remember getting to see, you know, the games that people don't really like to see, you know? So if you come, if you, if, if one of my friends comes here to, and they say, Hey, we want to go to a basketball game. Could I get them hooked up? Probably. But if it's a Utah versus the Lakers, probably not, you know? Right. Right. So, so I got to see uh, Bulls versus Raptors a lot. I saw them <laughs> play versus uh, Stoudemire, uh, T Mac, Vince, and all of that. And I just remember them playing, toying with them, man. I mean, literally in the second half, in the third quarter, on the bench with ice on their knees, laughing. Like, if Mike could have lit up a cigar right there, he would have just lit up a cigar. He would have did that. And just chill. Yeah. yeah. Like, because he, 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 he was, he was, he was. I mean, he was maximum. a bad man. So that's so like to to expound that point. Like, I hear stories from northeasterners um, when because when it comes to New England, New England's run, um, and like the pride that they exude and what have you. Is that like through a Chicago resident's lens? Is that the same type of feeling between like ninety one to ninety eight, and then? And then follow up question in '99 when you knew the ride was over, um, you know what? As a Chicago Bulls fan, you know where are you at now today? <laughs> so first question, as as you know, between '91 and '98, no one, the, yeah. The pride is always there. Like we were number one in attendance yet for years without being good. You know, um, before the Derrick Rose years, you know, we were number one in attendance throughout the Derrick Rose years too. So um, the pride has always been there. Chicago is a very loyal sports team. We're very cynical, you know, but we're also very loyal. Um, I mean, back then it was like a conversation piece, you know, you're from Chicago, people ask you all the questions and stuff because everybody loved the Bulls and Michael Jordan. And it kind of got corny, you know, having having all the Fairweather fans, I'm sure, uh, true Golden State Warriors fans, true Lakers fans. I see what late, you're saying. You know, it kind of got corny in that regard. Um, but yeah, I didn't think it, the run was over in 99. I had hope in Scotty and, and Tony. And I think that phantom call on Hubert, uh, the, on that jump shot, Hubert Davis uh, shot that, uh, you know, at the end of, I think it was game six or game seven. I think if that didn't happen, we could have went to the Eastern Conference Finals. So I think we still had hope. We still had a great team uh, the following year and a great system. I just think that we didn't have that oomph to get us over the top, you know, and, and, you know, Michael was just a, a game changer, man. Like it, it is weird watching basketball now and them trying to compare people to him because I even in, in rest his soul, you know, Kobe Bryant, when I, when I see other, other players, I don't see that effectiveness, that, 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 that machine, like, you know, uh, uh, predictability, you know, if he Great shot that fadeaway, it. if he shot that fadeaway uh, shot uh, uh, on the right side of the key on you, uh, it was over with, you know? Right. And not only did he have that fadeaway, he had like three or four counter moves for that fadeaway that'll put you in a torture chamber. And let me tell you, my Aunt Lisa and I watched every game we couldn't go to in my mom's basement and she would kill me on the, I mean, yelling and screaming, beating me up, man, because she was so excited because we, it, it was just must see TV. Like, you know, like you got to do your homework. Okay. He could watch the Bulls game real quick. Right. You know, yeah. that type of thing. It was like, I asked that I because, know. yeah, no, I asked that because like through a, a Utah, from a Utah's perspective for the jazz, I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't a huge jazz fan after like 90, like 95 roughly like i got spurred by um john stockton for a signature so i i changed teams i went to the magic yeah i was already a penny fan um from blue chips but like i i was so impressionable at that time you know just young kids so penny had the penny had the dopest uh a little really penny. good marketing yeah great marketing just it spoke to little kids anyway so i i jumped on that wagon and i went full magic but the point that i'm making um is that like from still from a utah's perspective even 
at that time, like playing basketball as much as I was, the jazz were always in the conversation. So like when, like in 95, they had a tough series with the the Rockets and 94, they had a tough series with the Nuggets. And, um, you know, they, they were constantly like in the mix of things in 96. They only, they had a tough series with the Sonics um, almost met the bulls, you know, but the Sonics prevailed in that series. Um, so, I mean, they could have met the bulls three years in a row type of shit. Yo. Uh, and y'all also had a, a, a Chicago legend, Nick Anderson on your team. And he missed those three free throws. For oh, the magic. Remember? You're talking about the magic and we don't need to talk about the magic. That's <laughs> So I, I like, don't like that. You brought up Nick Anderson's missed shots in 1995. That's what he's referring to the fucking finals game one against the Houston Rockets. We don't need to talk about that shit right now. <laughs> Yo, Nick Anderson, though, is a Chicago legend. He is a Chicago legend. And I, yeah. Um, but so, like, in 97 and 98, when they were playing the Bulls, like, I, it, to speak to, like, the, the efficacy of Michael Jordan and that whole team, although I, we want, I wanted the Jazz to win because of the, for the city, and not just like as a fan, I wanted them to win for the city. There was like so much like there's who, how are we going to stop them? Do you know what I'm saying? Like you would watch the games and you're like, okay, well he just turned the switch and now, you know what I'm saying? It, it was like that for Bulls fans watching them beat us. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure. Um, and then there was that beat down that happened. The, what was it like 94 to 55 or something? Yeah. The, uh, the jazz, the jazz against the bulls. The anyway, the point that I'm making ultimately though is that from a jazz, from a Utah's perspective, we, I, I was confident always in the jazz taking the court. Like they were, they were really doing it. They were really, really doing it. And um, I mean, now they're, you know, first in the West and they really look like um, they're going to do something. I can't, I'm pretty, uh, I'm looking forward to their, their matchup against the Lakers on the 24th of February, but they look real good this year, man. So, um, and I'm, I've steadily become a jazz fan from there, but I want to segue to uh, hip hop because, uh, you know, Jordan brand, it's uh, synonymous with hip hop. Um, I mean, I have some sneakers over here that uh, would tell the story, but um, when it comes to uh, hip hop and what's your, with your linkings are to it. I, I want to know um, slightly. Oh, look at that. That's the merch. That's the merch. You can see that at cabinogrimes.com. That's the magic tiles snapback hat. Bam, dog. Look at that. That is hard as nails. And also this hat too. You can get this one. Timing right. boy. That's what I'm talking about. Um, so I want you to speak on uh, some of your first experiences with hip hop and then um We'll, we'll uh, you know, dive into a little bit more um, from there. Uh, so I, I have a, a, a femme cousin, Corey, with the K, um, that is like my sister. She used to live with me. And um, she used to listen to the hip hop station in my mom's kitchen. And she would write down Rakim or LL Cool J lyrics. And pause, she would tape it on the radio and then she would play it and pause it and write the lyrics. And then her and her friends would would rap the lyrics in, in the kitchen or like on the block and stuff, man. And I was like, this is the coolest stuff ever. Yo, my cousin, my, my cousin used to have her, her homegirl, she had a theme song and her homegirls used to like, like a, uh, like you would see in a line in a, in a fraternity, they used to stomp and clap. Yeah. And they had a theme song and a theme for her as she walked down the street, man. She was so cold, man. And <laughs> it just, made, I'm, I'm telling you, she was so tough, right? She was so tough. And um, she just was the person that introduced me to hip hop. And I, me being like the, the baby of my generation, I always was around older uh, older, you know, siblings or like, uh, I mean, cousins and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I was just so you were into you it. were digesting their what they were listening to. Yeah, and like, like you know, it's a. I mean, if you from a, a if you from the hood, man, like everybody raps. Do they rap well? Probably, maybe, maybe not. But a lot of people do. You know what I'm saying? And not necessarily people that want to be MCs, just people that like to rap. You know, right? Um, yeah. So we were always like 
my cousin, my cousin Black always rapped and you know he made his own productions in his basement and he would play them in his little uh cavalier but you know you know your cousins get a car and everything like that and you have to listen to what they listen to so my older cousin got a a, a white cutlass 88 mm. with, the, with the chrome trim and he had this tape deck and he put a house speaker in the back seat I mean, in I'll the back speak of the truck. That's uh, how, that's... It, sounded so, it sounded so terrible, Nate. Let me tell you, it sounded so bad. <laughs> that's some it shit, the boy. Truck so bad, but it was bass. Yeah. And he used to play three tapes. The Crips versus Blood tape. Yo. Murder was the case by Snoop Dogg. Let's go. And Jazzmatized by Guru. Those Damn. were the three tapes he used to play all the time, bro. And... I mean, that and Ghetto Boy Radio on WGCI, man. So the Ghetto Boys had a, a little radio show on WGCI where they would, like, play their, their favorite music. Damn. And I just thought that was the coldest thing to me, man. Like, the Ghetto Boys is playing music for us. Wow. So, um, yeah, that's, that's about okay. it, man. That's, so that's, okay, so that's an introduction for you. All right. Um, when, when did you go into, like, did you start journalism at Ohio State? I started journalism like right after the Air Force. So when, or, or right before the, the Air Force, when I was waiting to go uh, to get my orders, you know, and to, to go to MEPS and everything, I was taking classes at Prairie State College in Chicago Heights. And, um, I was in a journalism class and they had this flyer passed around. They were like, we're interviewing this big time uh, journalist who wrote this book and did all of these things. And I look, and it was my homeboy's pops, like his oh. adopted father. And I'm like, yo, and I like kind of bogarted my way into the interview. You know what I'm saying? Like into interviewing him and writing about it. And um, ever since then, I had been interested in journalism. So yeah, I, I started really at Salt Lake Community. Uh, I started there. And then, you know, um, after the military, uh, I got out and I went to Salt Lake Community College and then, you know, eventually went on to get my degree in journalism from the University of Utah. Well, the reason uh, the, uh, I don't think that people get their flowers enough, even just for their accomplishments and when it comes to Scholastic, um, you know. Uh, oh, it they, was tough. You saw me living oh, in, in West Village. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the village, man. Yeah, we met there. We met there. Um the reason why I bring up the journalistic portion of it, um, I, why, I mean, was it just a seamless, in, uh, seamless for you to just be like, okay, well, I just would like to cover like hip hop um, the culture uh, because it's so, so close to me anyway. I mean, was it, what, what's been your thought there? I mean, or, or do you have more, or are you like, you know, Hey, I'm all I, over the board. I, I mean, I, I like to think I could, write about anything yeah I mean, absolutely you know, but i also think that as a writer your appeal to ethos is important as well you know so what you write about or your rhetoric has to appeal to credibility you know what i'm saying so speaking about things i know about was something that made me comfortable when i was in college and it just so happened that people started putting like Slug Magazine started putting my name on stuff and or excuse me, City Weekly started putting my name on stuff, Slug Magazine. People started asking me to write stuff and it just happened organically in that manner. But no, I like to write about everything, man. I, I write poetry. I write essays. I, I, I write uh, promotional materials for um, artists. I, 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 I like to write a lot of things. Okay. And I love that you touched on that. You feel like you can write anything. And I, I totally agree with you there, but it, there's something to be said and you touched on it um, when it comes to what's comfortable and the credibility portion that you spoke about, because it then, you know, builds that relationship and that, that bond that folks can get from that black and white text, you know? And then also where you, where I thought I could do the most good sure. when I was reading these things, I was like, Hey, yo, like, you know, I, I was like, yo, y'all, y'all need to put swell merchants on. Y'all need to put Zach Ivy on. Y'all need to put, you know, uh Dying Crew. like Dying Crew on. Y'all need to, well, they already, you know, sure, before sure. I even got out here. Uh, you know, that y'all y'all need to put you on in your magazine or something like that, you know? And I think that, you know, um 
that 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 that's that part of it as well like where are you where's your voice needed at the most you know so um they're also kind of connected to the community service stuff that i'm doing because hip-hop thank you and the community kind of kind of go hand in hand it's the most beloved uh, music genre of the people so it kind of just goes hand in hand with the community events that I'm, i'm involved with um, touch on those. I mean, and some that you've done in the past, like, and what it means to you, not just personally, but as, you know, ethically. I mean, it means a lot to me, man. It, it, it's it's a really uh, sore topic right now because I miss them so much. You know, mm-hmm. it was a very big part of my life for like seven or eight years. Mm-hmm. Uh, the past seven or eight years, man, we've been doing uh, community events in the um at Uprock and the parks and, and at other areas, you know, where we uh, connect uh, young people at the Boys and Girls Club with resources, uh, school supplies, uh, electronics, food, and um, uh, art contests. Of course, you know, Nate uh, has been helping me do uh, organize the park jams uh, we do every summer. And uh, it's, it's, it's important to me as an as a individual because when I was growing up, I always had, you know, uh, not, not to say my father was a deadbeat, but he just wasn't around geographically, you know? So um, I always had people in the community that stepped up and looked out for me, you know? So um, I, my, my younger brother passed away when he was 19. And I That's always felt like, I always felt like I could have did more for him, you know? So it kind of helped me come to grips. It kind of cathartic for me as well to help young people because, you know, it's something that I could do uh, to like positively put that energy, you know what I'm saying? Like to mm-hmm. make myself feel good about, about you know, our relationship and just to know that he 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 would be proud of me, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, that's beautiful. I, br- I appreciate you bringing that up. And again, Russell in peace to your brother, um, you know flowers for the dead for sure um the from uh from as your friend first off but also as an outsider before we were actually became friends um the community aspect portion of what you provide to the community is been something that's always stood out to me so for you to say that it's something that you miss i'm sure um is not even close to some of the wor- real like emotions that come from that right um because I see even just as like, as a father, you're as a father, I watch how you move and you're, you're very involved in making sure that uh, progression is happening constantly. So you're very um, unique in that aspect. Um, but also someone that I look to uh, when it comes to like, Hey, that next aspiration, like ha- hitting the next goal, things like that. Like you're constantly reaching and helping others reach new endeavors. So um, the community service ex- aspect that I was talking about, it's really important for me for the people to know that that's something that means a lot to you. Yeah. I think it helps. Um, I think it helped us get on the radio. I think yeah. it helped uh, amplify, you know, it helps amplify what you do because I think, you know, the the radio, a podcast, a, a microphone in your hand, it's a tool. And uh, whatever you put out there is going to come back somewhere, you know? And right. it's, it's not a only, always a one-on-one, like, you know, you put a good thing out, something good's going to happen back. But, you know, uh, it's just like everything in life, man. You got to put your cards in the, in the or, or put all your pebbles in the, in the, in the right, on the right side, you know, and hope things go your way, you know? Absolutely. So that's what we, we've been trying to do. Um, and I, and I, and I do appreciate all your help, man. I know every, <laughs> every park jam or every uh, cypher, man, the cyphers, man, we did cyphers at Uprock for almost 18 months, man. It was yeah. almost two years. We did cyphers at Uprock and you were, and you hosted them for me. Um, at, at your detriment, sometimes, you know, busy coming straight from work with your blazer coming on straight from work. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they were fun, man. It's always oh, very fun, fun when, when we get together in, in that type of spirit. And I think that it's, it's, it's direly needed. So, um, I'm going to need this COVID stuff to, 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 to Take a come chill. to a head right. sometime, man, you know, this summer, kick back, B. next summer, come on, we, we need it. We need you to kick back, B. 
<laughs> easy to kick back. You're very much about the local. I see you uh, drinking on the Mestizo's cup. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the Mestizo joint coffee house that's here in Salt Lake downtown area. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I, I, I want to end with uh, the experience that you've had with the Friday Night Fallout show, what that means to you and, uh, you know, what uh, you see, uh, you know, for it going forward. But let's start at the at the at the onset when it was brought to you. How was it brought to you? And what were your thoughts about actually doing it? Yo, so I got a message that the previous host wouldn't be doing it anymore. And they asked me, did I want to do it? And I was like, wow, like, you know, um, it, it's, 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 it's hard to describe the feeling I had, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm a radio head, like I love music, I'm an audiophile. Um, I started out listening to guys in Chicago, like Herb Kent, Sam Silk, Big Daddy Woo Woo, uh, the Baker Boys, you know, and I never, like I had a radio show in college, but I never thought like I would have a, ra a, a FM radio show that right. I would be able to, you know, uh, produce myself. and. Uh, when I thought about that, I'm like, I, I'm not going to produce this myself. I need to, you know, reach out to Nate and get some help <laughs> on this. <man. laughs> like, word up, because people don't, people think we're just on there, you oh. know, taking one record and putting another record on. And nope. it's not that easy. We don't have producers like DJ Envy and, and, and Charlemagne do on their show. Like, we got to work everything ourselves, you know? So, um, while it is a lot of work, it's it's like, I mean the 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 satisfaction I get from a good show is like so satiating. Like, I don't know, I I don't know how to describe it. You know, well, I'll help um, you because I, I because I know that you're absolutely spot on with your feels there. Like, you'll text me the next day, like when you we have a great show. You know, you're just like doc last night was dope you know what i'm saying or like after when we leave even you know we have like we it, folks don't know this but like um before a show i mean pre-covid we have a wall now in front of us but generally we'll we'll hit you know we'll we'll bump and be like hey you know what i'm saying like here we go like that's like all right radio personality mode you know what i'm saying here we go let's 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 do this show for the people this is what we come in for and so that's it's been a um it's been an experience with me for, to, to continue to do that with you. And I'm, I'm, I've spoke about this many times on other podcasts and even on the radio. Um, but I'm, I'm deeply honored to be on a part of it and for you to have reached out. We're it's, it's been something that um, has been actually resonating more in the last like six months than it did at the beginning. Um, and it was a process, man. We, yeah. we didn't, it took a while to get there. I mean, you know, for a couple, a couple months there, a few months there, you know, you'd be like, good show. And I'd be like, eh. Right. And you're like, what, what the heck are you talking about? Like, eh. it, it takes, it takes me a long time. You know, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, I don't know. You know, yeah. I, I'm a contemplator, you know, I'm a, yeah. I'm an overthinker. Sometimes I could get kind of, uh, I don't know. I, yeah. I could get too, too into, to the minutiae as it were, when it comes to the show. And oh, you get you very granular sometimes. Go. Yeah. You, you, gotta, very... you gotta let it, you gotta kind of like, you know, hey, let it fly, man, you know? Laugh yeah. at it and let it go. But, you know, it, 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 it's, a, it's a totally unique experience to be live on the radio Crazy. for people and to do it for years, like some of the, the DJs that are, are, you know, on with us now is even more, you know, amazing to to have that consistency and that, mm -hmm. that uh, you know, that level of, of, of production and quality in your shows. Like I listen to, to Laura and Billy and eBay and I'm like, we still got, you know, we we're doing well, but we still have room for improvement. There's still a lot of things that we can, we can improve upon. And those type 100%. of things just take time. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't skip 10 years, man. No, you know, you can't no. skip 10 years of experience and comfortable, uh, you know, comfortable, you know, I don't know comfortable, but, you know, uh, experience with the microphone. It's just like, you know, no. 
veterans don't, I mean, rookies don't come in with post work like 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 Kobe, man. You gotta you gotta work towards that. <laughs> don't come in with post work like Kobe. Yo, you, you, get, you don't do that. You don't do that in training right. camp your first year. Nah, you know, I hell mean, no. And 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 something uh, uh, Juggy told said in the interview we had with Juggy was you don't skip the steps. You know, mm-hmm. you can't you can't you 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 can. You can't do what Juggy does because you haven't had 20 years in a game like Juggy, you know? Right. Like you can you can study what he's doing, but it's that's nothing you can make up, you know? And I think a lot of people try to make up that step. Like we live in a montage culture, you know, like the, the montage type happen. of shit. Yeah, yeah cut and, paste. and it just and it just happens. Nah, B, we gotta it takes it takes time to get to that level to where we're syndicated and stuff like that, to where mm-hmm. we could to where we could just get on a get on and and know what we're know what we're, I think we're at the point kind of where we have a format our format ready you know we took it and, and it kind of works naturally we don't have to talk about it like we used to you know right and we're always but, changing we're always evolving I mean they, like uh you know even with the news with Nate thing uh segment like that just changed last Friday as far as like what we're going to be doing with that and and that's again experience and but, it speaks but, to bro, it happened on the fly this week bro right that was the beautiful thing yeah it happened on the fly this week or, or last but we weekend. both see stuff like that we both we because we've been working with each other long enough and like get like each other's mannerisms enough like knowing like okay boom that's gonna work and then being like yo what do you think about this and we're both very agreeable agreeable we both like work well off each other so um i wanted to speak also and say this because it's very important to me that beyond just being brought broadcasting with you it's also evolved our relationship as friends um Indeed. so I, I, I take that because I have, I have, I had a lot of stuff that I had to work on for myself and vice versa. I mean, we all do, you know, but uh, it's, it's evolved our friendship tenfold um, beyond being broadcasting together. Like you're my friend, you know what I'm saying? And um, that is one of the biggest things that I can take away from our experience from getting on the KRCL um, is that molding. Like we have two, different types of mindsets but like have managed to get to the point that we are now because of all the we've gone through a lot together we've just gone through a lot together you know what i'm saying like people don't know like the a relationship like that relationship that you and i have and it's i think it's important for folks to get that bird's eye view right now that are listening that like keith and i have like we have skin in this we've been doing this for five years uh, almost six, almost six years, like as far as broadcasting together with the people's podcast. And then go ahead. <laughs> and what's crazy though. Oh, the origin story though. I DJ for you. Oh my at, God. At, at, Donnell's, <laughs> at Donnell's shop over there behind state street. Yeah. And it was supposed to be a battle between uh, Dre and somebody who did show up. Dre came and picked us up. We went over to the venue and everything. Uh, uh, Pell performed. Pell oh, performed, fuck. and the undercards and the undercards battle, but we didn't get the the main the main event didn't happen because one of the dudes backed out. I remember, and then wow. uh, I, I remember that's that is the first thing we did together. Wow, yeah. Well, that's yeah, that's great. You, I mean, that's you didn't remember the, that, did you? I don't know. I mean. You don't even remember. It was a battle. It was a battle that, that you did at a tattoo shop. Dre Day? I DJ. Yeah, Dre Day was supposed to. He picked us up in a Lexus a, a, with, with some beats in it. Yeah, I'm sure. It, I, I remember using Dre's. I have a, a story about that Lexus, but. Yeah, um, yeah. He picked us up in that Lexus with the beats in it. Yeah. We went to the venue and everything. Pell performed at the venue. Almost got to a fight with some like out of town dudes afterwards who were acting crazy. Oh my God. I, 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 it's vague. It's yeah, vague. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm searching. Then, I'm trying to grab and then, and, 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 and going you, in the cloud. And, and you and this girl dropped me off in the West village at the end of the night. Yeah, oh, man. I don't I remember. Man. I remember. Wow. And, and I, and I don't remember. Fast times I, at Ridgemont high for me, boy. <laughs> and, 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 and flash to now, man. And what, what we got for the future, man, like the plans right. for the future with the show, man. Of course, you know, KRCL is moving, man. We're supposed to have uh, a temporary space. And then afterwards, we're supposed to have a, a permanent space yep. downtown with uh, some area for 
performances, man. I want to start doing some performance, having some performances, uh, doing some more things with YouTube and IG Live, and definitely uh, incorporating the station and the show into the park jam when you know all of this madness settles right. down and we can have uh, concerts again. You know, absolutely. So that's my, my that's my vision, and of course syndication, man. Yeah, syndication. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Syndication, Dag. I mean, um, you know. Well, I want to give you a round of applause, Keith. <laughs> that's a soul clap. Yeah. Are we going to uh, add that after the, the soul clap effect? Oh, it's in there, Dag. We're, we're listening now. Um, I want to say thank you for joining uh, tonight. Um, is there... Is there anything else? Uh, go ahead and share your, you know, your uh, socials and everything so that folks can get in touch with you further. Oh, man, nobody wants to follow my socials. I got puppies and my baby girl on there, man. Follow us at Friday Night Fallout on IG and the Friday Night Fallout show dash KRCL on Facebook. And then um, that's it, man. I mean, you know, stay in tune with the Friday Night Fallout show every Friday of course, on KRCL Radio, krcl.org, from 10.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time to 1 a.m. And uh, you'll hear from us then. Hell yeah, that's what's up, man. Episode two, Our Stories, Nate Chacon the Third, here with my boy Keith McDonald, utahrapper.com, libro.fm, put in your code Story Bingo to get two audiobooks instead of one, jawsersize.com, 60% off your order with um with code story bingo and yeah um big ups to you again keith certainly appreciate it and you know we're out man episode two our stories peace dun, dun, dun. spare fingers yes.